The Mojave Wasteland is a dangerous place post Great War of 2077. Tribes such as the Great Khans roam the land, taking everything for themselves. Dangerous creatures such as the Death Claws and giant scorpions attack anyone they see and have taken over mines and remote villages, and war is always looming on the horizon. The Legion, a deadly force consisting of slave warriors and former defeated tribe members, are on a conquest to take over the whole of New California and eventually all over America. Their leader, Kaiser, massively influenced by Roman culture, keeps his society very disciplined and always on their toes ready for a fight. However, there would be one faction that would stand against this conquest and would make sure this brutal faction could not expand too far into their land. That faction would be the huge organization known as the NCR, the New California Republic. This faction would be huge with a population of around 700,000 people living in its cities and urban areas. Its trade routes would be so successful that they would have their own currency and its area would create jobs for all who had skills. Setting up as a group that was to rebuild the country in a positive, inclusive way, the NCR would be successful. However, later down the line would take a turn and be seen as more of a corrupt institute with questionable end goals, leading to other factions hitting back against their forces. But where did the NCR come from? How did they form and become such a superpower within the wasteland? And what was their fate going into the 23rd century? Well in this video we explore the powerhouse faction known as the New California Republic. This is the law behind the NCR. Before the Great War of 2077, Voltec, along with the shadow government known to some as the Enclave, had begun setting up vaults, nuclear bunkers that would help protect the civilians of America from the nuclear bombs that would be inevitable as the war with China got worse. However, they had a darker objective as well. All the vaults were set up to be used as experiments for those who went in them, some having drugs pumped into the airways to see how the civilians reacted, some being populated with 1,000 women and one man and even one that had a population of one man and a box of puppets to see what he did, causing him to lose his mind and go on a killing spree out in the wasteland. The vaults were deadly places, and one in particular was the start of the NCR's journey. Vault 15 was one of the few vaults whose construction went smoothly and without delays. The social experiment that Vault Tech wanted to conduct here was to put people who had radically diverse ideologies and cultures together to see how they got along in a confined space. Monitor in their interactions and see if they could last over the 50 years they were sealed away for. Locked away from all other contact after the bombs eventually fell in 2077, it wasn't until around the year of 2141 until the vault dwellers were able to venture out of the vaults into the world once again. Once the doors opened, most of the dwellers marched out, stripping the vault of all its resources, all of its equipment and anything they could use to survive. This included the Garden of Eden creation kit, a terrifying forming device that would be used to create green land once again. The vault dwellers who left however were some of the most violent and fierce individuals within the wasteland. As they left with all their resources, they would form into some of the most feared tribes within the wasteland. These dwellers set up into the Khan, the Jackals and the Vipers, who would go out into the wasteland and take anything they wanted by force, and would continue to do so for over two decades. There was one last group however who did not form into a tribal faction like the others did, and instead set themselves up in the town called Shady Sands, which was created thanks to the Gek. Within this town lived a man named Aradesh, with his daughter Tandy. Aradesh was an extremely cautious man who always wanted to protect Tandy and would keep her close at all times. However, Tandy wasn't like that, and instead was extremely lively and strong-willed, bored with how simple and easy life was in Shady Sands. Tandy wanted more and would find that very quickly. Minding her own business, Tandy would be captured 
by a group of Khan members and would be held for ransom. Thinking this was the end, Tandy would be saved by a mysterious individual known only as the Lone Wanderer. This left a lasting impact on Tandy and helped her to see life in a different way. After this encounter with the Khans, Shady Sands was able to live in a period of peace as the Lone Wanderer had scared the raiders away from it, allowing the population to have a wide berth away from any raiders looking for resources. This spurred on Tandy and together with her father used this opportunity to develop the land that they had. Trade routes were set up within New California and Shady Sands began to prosper. Their influence was growing and Aradesh along with Tandy had now set the foundations for something great. Junktown and the hub now had joined the trade routes thanks to Tandy which was massive for the town bringing in a really strong economy. Aradesh was always extremely anxious about involving themselves with these two places. However Tandy's determinedness to be bigger and better helped them achieve this. Eventually Shady Sands dominated the Brahmin trade and because of it states started to form and the new California Republic was beginning to blossom with other smaller factions such as the Brotherhood of Steel lending a hand to this rebuilding of the wasteland. It was now inevitable that the political structures would form and it was in 2186 where a nation identity movement started to gain popular acceptance. Within that year it had now become official that this group would be named the New California Republic and all of the allies who traded and supported each other would gather under that faction name. It was here where a constitution was formed and the ideologies of the NCR would spread throughout New California with Junktown becoming one of the first provisional states of this faction because of its history with Shady Sands being the oldest and most trusted trade partner. By 2189, the NCR had expanded even further, with now five states being voted into the society, those being Shady Sands, Los Angeles, Maxon, Hub, and Dago. Aradesh and Tandy had done it. Their Gek created town had now branched out, and Tandy's goal of doing something great to rebuild the country had led to the formation of this vast society called the New California Republic. People were safe, they had their own economy, they had trade routes which could give them food, water, and other necessary supplies, and they could all live securely away from the brutal tribes such as the Khans. It was the start of something great, and it was only going to get better for Tandy going forward. With the NCR now in full swing with its five states and its economy growing, the population made it so that Aradesh was now their first president. A fitting tribute to the man who started everything within his small Gek created town. Tandy was extremely proud of this as they continued to build their republic even further. However, Aradesh wanted to try something. He was inspired by their vault dweller legacy and along with the NCR's first ranger Seth ventured out to explore vault 13. However, as they ventured into it, the two would disappear disappear, never return and would be presumed dead. By 2196, the NCR's first president had now been declared dead. They were now leaderless and Tandy had now lost her loving father. With Aradesh gone, it was only right that Tandy took over the role of president of the NCR as she was the co-creator of it alongside her father. Although this was a giant burden for Tandy, it was she who had made the most changes on the setup of Shady Sands and helped the NCR prosper. She was the perfect leader and in fact would be the best thing to happen to the NCR moving forward. Along with the Congress, Tandy looked to expand the state to make sure that peace and stability was fundamental for the wasteland. That was the priority, to make sure the citizens of the land could live peacefully without worry of the brutal nature of the post-war world. Here Tandy wanted to forge a deal with New Reno and buy Vault City, merging them into the NCR and helping supply them with the NCR's far superior medical technology. However, this did not work and New Reno along with Vault City became rivals to the NCR, with them believing the NCR was trying to take over everything for their own gains. Alongside that, other factions also opposed the NCR's peaceful expansion, with Vault 15 acting as a proving ground. Tension grew higher between all the powerful factions as their attention drew towards the town of Reading, who was the primary supplier of gold ore. For whoever controlled the supply of gold ore controlled the currency throughout the whole of New California. However, Reading was far too 
too far away for any of them to forge a military takeover. It would just be too expensive for any of the forces. Things got worse going into 2241 as factions upped their efforts to control Reading and get the gold ore supply and links for themselves. The Mordino family, who were a powerful family within New Reno, tried to control the town through the drug market, pumping tons of jet into town to try and get that market to take over. The Bishop family, also from New Reno, also tried to force Vault City into a partnership but was later rejected. And then with the NCR tried to arm mercenaries to attack the city to almost bully the city into joining the NCR. But on top of all that, North California was also experiencing the worst dry season in years, causing widespread food shortages in such places as Arroyo and Modoc, who were known for being some of the most poor, less developed areas within California. Using these events to their advantage, the NCR would step up their efforts and their campaign would see them expand into the hungry and ruined New Areo, Reading as well as Vault City, meaning that the NCR controlled the currency of California and was also one of the largest factions in the state, and anyone who went against them would be vastly outnumbered by their society. They also had very influential friends in high places, with some of the wealthiest families within New Veno endorsing everything the NCR did. And help them with this expansion to help line their own pockets or gain influence out within the wider wasteland. But the NCR didn't stop there and in fact turned their efforts towards attacking the faction known as the Enclave. In 2241 the Enclave oil rig was targeted by a new mysterious lone wanderer called the Chosen One who had uncovered their plans to cleanse the world from mutations caused by nuclear radiation. After finding out they were behind everything from the vaults, the super mutants to the Great War and the plan after, the Chosen One blew up the oil rig, ruining the Enclave's plans and killing their president in the process. The Chosen One would die in the process and Navarro, the Enclave's military base, would be a shadow of its former self, with some of the Enclave personnel still residing in it. The NCR would watch this happen and in 2246 would venture into the remnants of Navarro, stating it still posed a threat to the region. The NCR army would then go on to wipe out all of the Enclave remnants within this place. The Enclave personnel personnel would either be killed, tried for war crimes, or would escape the area and scatter across the west coast, leaving them to be targets to pretty much all the factions that opposed the Enclave. The NCR were able to strip the base of all its technology, weapons caches, and numerous vertebrates, allowing the NCR to now be equipped with some of the best technology within the land. In just 50 years, the new California Republic had dominated the land, had forced cities into joining its Republic, had taken the best equipment for themselves, taken small under developed towns that needed food and resources and on top of that had full control of the currency of the land. Tandy's so-called peaceful expansion had worked and the NCR had now officially become the most dominant force in the whole of California, overwhelming all the tribes, the Enclave, the Brotherhood of Steel, as well as all of the other traders throughout the lands. However, the year was now 2248 and President Tandy at the age of 103 would finally meet her end. Dying to an unnamed illness, her 52 year presidency that had been unchallenged in that time had now officially come to an end. Her legacy lives on through her NCR faction, with the people of the NCR still seeing her as the most popular president to date. But it was now time for a change, but this would lead to a lot of turmoil down the line, as other factions started to rise up and challenge the leadership of this faction, who they deemed as overwhelming and sometimes corrupt. President Tandy had now passed away and it was time for a new president to take her place. It was here where Joanna Tibbet, the vice president at the time, took the role of president and tried to continue the world set up by Tandy. Tibbet, however, was nothing like Tandy and in fact did nothing within office, despite being re-elected in 2251. It was two years later where Tibbet was ejected from the office, with everyone branding her as timid as she refused to act after 38 NCR citizens were murdered by raiders in the Mojave Waste. In 2253, Tibbet was out and a new president was elected, that being Wendell Peterson. It was here where the NCR's policies and societal changes started to take place. Thanks to President Tandy, citizens under the NCR had it pretty comfortable. Throughout all of their rule, they were granted the luxuries of a steady economy, healthcare, laws and a legitimate government, as well as a well-armed military to keep them safe from outsiders who wished to cause them harm. Life was pretty nice for the 700,000 citizens 
citizens living within the NCR areas. Alongside that, it was an extremely diverse society. People from all walks of life would live together. Ghouls were welcome into cities. People who had different religious views were allowed to gather as long as they didn't incite violence. It was a pleasant place to live. However, because of this new economic powerhouse the NCR had turned itself into after 2241, survivalists weren't really a thing and community focus went out the window and turned more into individual prosperity. Instead of groups of people going out to look for resources to benefit the community, individuals would sell their trade to others, businesses would supply items, economy focused living became the focus and more of a me versus everyone else way of looking at things became more dominant compared to the way the tribes lived before. This was also not helped by Wendell Peterson who in 2269 changed some of the laws of the Tandy administration, removing the limit of Brahmin cattle per person, meaning there was an incredible rise of Brahmin and agricultural barons, meaning there was more corruption within the NCR ranks over the Brahmin industry. The wealthy started to become more wealthy under the new president of Wendell Peterson, as the everyday workers started to get poorer. Everything Tandy had set up was causing individuals within the NCR society to become more greedy and less about community, going against everything they had set up in the first place, but realistically was inevitably going to happen regardless. There was also a small issue in terms of population. By 2241, the population of NCR territory was said to be around 700,000 citizens living within sprawling urban centers. Because of this, the NCR higher-ups decided it could have some of the best manpower in the wasteland, so conscription was introduced, meaning that if you were a young adult man or woman, you could be conscripted at a moment's notice, meaning you had to fight under the flag. Whilst a lot probably liked this, for a lot I'd imagine it was not a nice thought. The large population would also lead to problems in terms of food and water later on down the line, due to the sheer amount they would have to bring in to feed the masses. Ultimately, the NCR is like any modern society. It has a large population. It has a dependency on businesses and individuals wanting to succeed in life and prides itself on its military to keep its territory safe. They have strict laws such as anti-slavery, no prejudice amongst people with different religious views, sexuality, race, or even if they are mutated, with some super mutants even being allowed within their military ranks. Immigration is widely accepted for anyone wanting to live within their society. However, they do have to abide by the laws of the land and anyone wanting to live under NCR rule will have to accept that they will be conscripted to the army at any time and will have to pay any appropriate taxes. Most of the citizens, however, love living under the security of the NCR in a world that feels very familiar to the one before the war. However, the NCR's constant expansion and its focus on individual prosperity leading to some pretty corrupt individuals and families at the top would lead to other factions despising their presence within New California. This would lead to a ton of conflicts starting from 2241 and lasting for as long as some can remember. The Enclave NCR was the first and was one of the easiest for the NCR NCR as they just cleared out the stragglers and took their resources. However, at the same time, the NCR was faced with the backlash from their once allies, the Brotherhood of Steel. The Brotherhood didn't like how quickly the NCR were expanding and their control on the overall currency. The Brotherhood really lost a lot of power and blamed it massively on the NCR, especially as their military started to grow at a rapid pace. It was also because they had ongoing disagreements related to how technology should be used within the wasteland. After a while, the two factions clashed together leading to a long and bloody war that used up a lot of men and resources for both sides. Alongside that, a lot of the tribes still hated the NCR because of their past and just seeing how much land and wealth they had. This led to skirmishes with the Vipers, the Jackals and other raider tribes. However, it was in 2278 where a bloody event happened that would spread a dark tale about the NCR, painting them in such a negative light that to some, the good guys the NCR was actually a lie. Here the NCR was fighting against the Khans who had been causing them trouble ever since they first stepped out of Vault 15. With information given to the soldiers, the NCR surrounded the Khan camp at Bitter Springs. The leader's intel stated it was full of raiders and ordered the elite 1st reconnaissance battalion to set up on Coyote Tail Ridge and fire upon any Khans who attempted to flee until they had all died or they had run out of ammo. When the supposed attack began, the NCR troops opened fire on all of the Khans leaving. However, the intel was wrong. Instead of Khan warriors, the people leaving the camp were in fact Great Khan women, children and elderly. 
The communication between the command and the soldiers on the front line was totally wrong. And instead of fighting against other soldiers, they had just slaughtered innocents who were just trying to flee to safety. This event affected many of the NCR soldiers, including Craig Boone, who immediately retired from the NCR due to psychological reasons. Captain Dartrey, who was also at the scene, tried to salvage what had happened to the best of his ability, and because of it was promoted to major. However, as he has said many times, that was not the way he wished to be promoted. This attack caused the NCR to go down pretty negatively in people's opinions, making others question what the NCR was truly capable of if they wanted to wipe out a group. And where exactly did their expansion stop? To other factions such as the Brotherhood of Steel, this would have been even more reason to fight back against this faction as they had now massacred innocents, not even checking their own intel on the matter. But by this point, the NCR was under new leadership with President Aaron Kimball, a decorated war hero, now successful politician. Thanks to his fights back against the tribes within the wasteland, Kimball was already seen as the hero of the Mojave by the NCR population, and going forward, it would only get better for him. In 2274, Kimball had a plan to occupy the Hoover Dam, using it to not only help power the land, but also send clean water to all the areas of New California. Here he composed a deal with Robert House of New Vegas to send his forces to the dam to hold military occupation of the dam. However, he would also have to accept that House was the ruler of New Vegas, and nothing could change that. Both parties agreed and almost immediately power was sent to the Strip, as well as the NCR territories, as well as clean water for the people. This was bad news for the small group of Brotherhood of Steel members who were occupied within the Helios 1 power plant at the time. As the NCR troops moved into the Vegas area, Elder Elijah and his order were discovered as they launched guerrilla skirmishes against the NCR. Knowing that they were in the tight spot within the facility, it was only a matter of time before the NCR moved in to take it. Thus began the NCR's attack named Operation Sunburst. Desperate to defend the facility, the Brotherhood defended against the waves of NCR troopers. However, it was too much for them to handle, and eventually their defenses fell and they were overrun. The Brotherhood tried to retreat, however, only Elder Elijah survived, disappearing in the midst of the battle. The Brotherhood, however, did have one victory, as they were able to activate Helios 1's Archimedes 1 security measures as a trap to the first NCR soldier to enter the primary control area. After this, however, the Brotherhood went into hiding. The NCR had too many numbers that were far superior in battle for them to handle. Throughout the Vegas area, the Brotherhood's presence was almost non-existent, as they feared the power of the NCR. President Kimball had done it. He and his Republic now had new alliances within New Vegas, had clean water, had power running through their cities, and the largest army in New California. At least, for now. And whilst the Brotherhood tried desperately to take out their gold mines and ruin their economy, they were able to bring it back under control once again, and the people praised Kimball for all he had done. However, despite defeating the tribes of the Wasteland, the Brotherhood, and the Enclave, there was a new force on the horizon, one growing in numbers faster than anyone before, and would be a great threat to the NCR within the Vegas area. For you see, Kaiser and his Legion were on their way to discover the New Vegas Strip and the Hoover Dam. The year was now 2277 and the Legion had arrived on the scene, a collection of tribes brought together by their one true leader, Kaiser. Setting up on Fortification Hill, the Legion would overlook the dam with one goal in mind, to take it over and then move into New Vegas. That would be Kaiser's own personal Rome to lead from. Kimball knew of their existence since 2271 and has actually already made a pact with the Desert Rangers, a group of highly skilled warriors with some of the best armor in the wasteland to help them fend off any threat that might want to cause them harm, be that the tribes, the Brotherhood, or the Legion. Kimball knew that war with the Legion was coming. It didn't take too long until suddenly skirmishes broke out between NCR soldiers and Legion Legionnaires. The NCR quickly realized that they were unlike those who they had fought before. They were extremely well trained, had vast numbers, and were willing to kill themselves if it meant their cause would be won. Immediately after these skirmishes, Kaiser ordered Malpai Legate to attack the NCR forces at the Hoover Dam, leading to the first battle 
of Hoover Dam. But the NCR didn't hold back and fended off the vicious attack. NCR sharpshooters took out a lot of the Legion's officers and battle-hardened veterans from afar, leading to the Legion panicking mid-attack. The NCR decided that they needed to find a way to hit the Legion hard and get them to retreat, or they would just keep sending hundreds more in a war of attrition, something the NCR used early in their battles. Here the NCR troops pretended to retreat into Boulder City in the hope the Legion would follow. They were correct as Malpai Legger ordered his best men to follow them, but within this city, the NCR troops had rigged it to blow. As the Legion's elite forces stormed the city, the place went up in a massive detonation, wiping out all of the attacking forces, which included their most experienced warriors. The first battle of Hoover Dam had come to an end, but the war still continued. Still with thousands of soldiers, Kaiser kept hitting back against the NCR, destroying some of their trade links and crippling their economy. Famine and food shortages started to spread throughout the NCR territories, and war was really cutting down a lot of their population on both the Legion and the NCR's side, with some saying it loses a thousand troopers every year. As of 2281, the war is at a stalemate, and two societies both with different views, yet are quite similar in terms of wanting to create a safe haven away from the threats of the wasteland, sit and wait for the other to attack. Only one person can be the defining factor in the second battle of Hoover Dam that is inevitable to happen, and that is the mysterious courier. No matter what the individual chooses, it is clear that what the NCR had built up has been incredible. They have the largest population out of any. Their trade links provide the whole of their California states with resources, and their steady economy allows them to create jobs and put people back into a world that is familiar to what it was pre-Great War. Are they the good guys? Are they the bad guys? That's all down to your perspective. Whilst they have a lot of good, they have committed atrocities like in Bitter Springs and have helped corrupt wealthy individuals to hold too much power in certain industries. Whatever your view of them is, it is safe to say that Aradesh, Tandy, as well as Kimball's work will go down in history. And no matter what happens in the future, the NCR's work will always be remembered by the wastelanders within New California. And that is the lore behind the good guys or the bad guys, whatever way you want to think of them, of Fallout the NCR. Did you enjoy this video? Did I get it wrong? Let me know in the comments below. Also, leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps and it's uh, really nice if you do support this channel. I'll leave my social media links below if you want to support me on there, as well as my playlist links for more videos like this. Also, quickly, I'm thinking of streaming on my second YouTube channel as I'm falling out of love with Twitch. So if you'd like to see me do that, then let me know and I'll try and set that up or something and also if you really really like this content and want to support me financially i'll leave my link to my patreon and you can also support me on here as a youtube member and whilst we are on that subject i'd like to thank my supporters real quick big thanks to our big fish duquesne 23 sacrum and rhino head our sharks the avp man and connor and our now five huge megalodons sinus jacob Garcia, jjd896 wow search gaming and our new guy shadow sgt also big shout out to our youtube channel member our wise one jambu as well as all all my amazing subscribers over on Twitch. All your support means the world to me and means I can make these videos for you guys, so thank you so much. But that is all for now. Thank you all so much for watching once again, and I shall see you all in the next one. Cheers.